Right. So as we obviously have more people joining, we'll just uh, slowly start with the introduction and um, and let people in as we go. So I just like to stop and say good morning, good afternoon, good evening to all of you who've decided to join this webinar. That's the InHope Annual Report of 2023. I'm Charlotte Van Lanschot. I'm Head of Marketing and I'll be emceeing today's webinar. So just to go through, we have a few basic guidelines. First of all, this meeting will be recorded and it will also be added to our YouTube channel so that we update that and you'll be able to access that after the fact. We'll also be writing a recap. So if that's a preference, we'll be sending that out um, in the upcoming week. Please be aware of your surroundings. Obviously, some of the material is slightly more sensitive. Uh, and obviously note that you've been muted and your video has been disabled. That does not mean we don't want to have any interaction, uh, interactions. Of course we do. So whilst the chat function is turned off, we highly recommend that you use the Q&A function. And when we get to the end of today's session, we will be opening up the Q&A and those discussions with our speakers. So on that note, I just want to highlight for you all that we have more upcoming webinars. We have actually four more to wrap up this season. As you can see in front of you, I'd like to leave this slide on the screen for just a few moments to give you a chance if you would like to scan that QR code if you're interested in signing up to more. Uh, obviously, we really see the um, interest in the trends regarding AI and regarding online predator behaviors, which is why those are sort of the subjects that we've decided to focus on in some of our upcoming webinars. Um, so I'm just going to just going to leave that for an extra second to give people a chance that they are interested in scanning that. And now I'm just going to move us on forward. So obviously today's webinar, the InHope Annual Report, we launched last week and we obviously decided that it would be a great opportunity with the launch to, to sort of bring in two of our, our speakers from, from InHope in order to give you a, a bit of a deep dive into what those data and trends really say and, and the information behind the numbers. As we all know, some of these numbers can um, be maybe misunderstood or um, lead to assumptions on certain trends that we're seeing. And we wanted to give that deep dive opportunity so that you can really learn the ins and outs of what we do, what's changed uh, and how things are. So, oh, sorry. So on that note, I'd obviously like to hand over to our first speaker today. We have Abby Roberts, who's our project manager. She'll be kicking off now. I'll be going quiet. I'd like to hand over to Abby Roberts to go over the broader scope of what we've achieved in, in the past year. Abby, over to you. Thank you so much, Charlotte. My name is Abby Roberts, and I am a project manager with InHope, and I've been with the team for going on nearly five years now. And I am very honored to have the opportunity to present you all the remarkable achievements of the InHope Network in 2023, as reflected in the numbers in our annual report launched last week. So I will be providing a snapshot of the work of the InHope Secretariat, that's the InHope team behind the scenes, while my colleague Kalina will walk you through the data more related to hotline work, report processing, and trends therein. So to start with, for context, InHope is the global network of internet hotlines combating online child sexual abuse material, or CSAM. And as we have just recently welcomed a new member from Nigeria, the network now consists of 55 hotlines in 51 countries that provides the public with a way to anonymously report illegal content online. These reports are then reviewed by content analysts who classify the legality of the material, which is then shared with their national law enforcement agency partners, and a notice and takedown order is sent to the relevant national hosting provider. Our member hotlines play a very crucial role in the response to public reports of CSAM and online child exploitation and abuse. By providing these very structured and accountable mechanisms at the national level and through the exchange of interjurisdictional information through the global in-home network, hotlines ensure that CSAM is removed from public access as quickly as possible. And throughout 2023, our dedicated network of hotlines worked tirelessly, leveraging cutting edge technology and their collaborative partnerships to make significant strides towards our mission of eradicating child sexual abuse material online. And today, Kalina and I are here to showcase this tangible impact of this work. 
and in the pages of our annual report and in the data that we are presenting today, you will find not just numbers, but stories of resilience, innovation in uh, interesting and challenging times and unwavering commitment to the cause. And from the number of reports processed to the rapid response times enacted by member hotlines, each of these figures represents a step forward in combating CISO online and ensuring a more safe and healthy environment in the digital ecosystem. So in 2023, our network of member hotlines across the globe continued to grow, and this expanded our reach and enhanced our ability to detect and remove harmful content swiftly. And the statistics in our annual report bear a testament to the dedication of our hotlines and the effectiveness of the in-help network and our cross-jurisdictional approach to combating this problem. And lastly, the technological advancements that we've seen throughout this year, which Kalina is going to highlight later, have enabled us to streamline these processes and more effectively optimize our resources and stay ahead of evolving threats throughout the digital landscape. So before I dive into a little more of the data, I would like to just first extend a very heartfelt thank you to our partners who make the work of the InHope Network possible. So first and foremost, we'd like to extend our deepest appreciation to the European Commission for their unwavering support and their commitment to our cause. Their funding of our core work not only sustains the operation of the in-home network, but also make, makes events, especially like this webinar and the webinar series we're running possible. And we are especially grateful for their continued support as they are the longest running supporter and advocate for our network of hotlines. Alongside the Commission, we'd also like to extend our sincere thanks to Safe Online for their generous support of our innovative projects like Project Escape and the Universal Classification Schema. And Safe Online's belief in the power of innovation and data to drive positive change has been really, really instrumental in advancing our efforts to combat online exploitation and to promote more collective action in this space to eradicate illegal content. And then lastly, as you can see on screen, I would like to first extend our gratitude to our on annual funding partners, which you can see on the left in yellow, whose contributions provide very vital support for our network expansion and capacity building initiatives, particularly in Africa, Latin America, and Asia. And then last and certainly not least, we'd like to express our appreciation for our cooperation partners, for their collaboration and shared commitment to our mission. Together, we have created alliances and pooled our resources and leveraged our collective expertise to confront the challenges posed by online abuse and exploitation. So now I would like to proceed on to the achievements of the InHope Secretariat in 2023. The work of InHope is centered around the key objectives that you can see on screen. First and foremost, we recognize the importance of raising awareness of this issue. It is very imperative that we inform the public and key stakeholders about what constitutes harmful content and provide guidance on how and where to report it when found to member hotlines. And additionally, throughout this year, we've also aimed to educate policymakers, including government officials, law enforcement agencies, and international bodies to promote the value of hotlines and to more effectively support their work legislatively and in the policy sphere. Alongside this, we also very much appreciate the significance of growing partnerships. And we work very closely with a diverse array of stakeholders, which includes governments, intergovernmental organizations, civil society organizations like ourselves, private sectors partners. And we use all of these relationships to leverage our collective expertise and resources to amplify our impact as a network. Alongside this, central to our mission is the expansion of our global network of hotlines, and we are very committed to identifying and supporting new hotlines worldwide and onboarding them into the network by providing consultation and training to ensure they meet standards to act effectively as a hotline and join the in-help network. 
And by strengthening our network, we enhance our ability to detect and respond to online child sexual abuse and exploitation around the world as quickly and effectively as possible. We also place a great amount of emphasis on the exchange of expertise. Through the establishment of policies and best practice standards, we work to facilitate knowledge sharing amongst hotlines and between our stakeholders and partners that work in the space. And by working to foster these relationships and build this trust, we harness this collective expertise to address the challenges that we are all facing in combating illegal material online. And then lastly, we are also dedicated to ensuring quality assurance in our operations and within our network. And by developing consistent, effective, and secure mechanisms for exchanging reports between hotlines internationally, we aim to ensure an efficient and coordinated response to illegal content worldwide. So these key objectives underpin the achievements of the Secretariat in 2023, which can be divided into three pillars, network expansion and regionalization, awareness and reach, and knowledge exchange and capacity building. So I'm going to start with celebrating our work in the realm of network expansion and regionalization. In 2023, Inhope welcomed five new funding partners, Tether, Twitch, Grayshift, Discord, and Uvo. Their support facilitates our network expansion activities, particularly outside of the European Union, with a focus on Latin America, Africa, and Asia in 2023. Alongside these funding partners, we are also proud to announce the addition of four new member hotlines to the InHope network, Slovakia, Argentina, Ukraine and Moldova, which brought our total number of members in 2023 to 54 in 50 countries around the world. Additionally, we have a commitment to fostering regional cooperation. And due to this, we facilitated the launch of the Indo-Pacific chapter as eight Asian Pacific hotlines expanded their support and knowledge exchange efforts by bringing about this chapter and launching its efforts, looking towards a collective action in 2024. And lastly, while onboarding these partnerships and four new member hotlines is an incredible feat in and of itself, it is underpinned by years of effort by our network expansion team who work with a variety of prospective members at all times to set up processes and establish partnerships with local law enforcement, governments, and industry. And to this end, our network expansion team conducted 80 online meetings in 2023 with organizations who were interested in establishing national hotlines. And this is a snapshot of the behind the scenes work of InHope that goes into making these numbers that we're presenting a reality. Moving on to our efforts in awareness and reach. The InHope Annual Summit in 2023 saw over 300 attendees come together to discuss partnering product with policy and to discuss strategies combating online exploitation on platforms. Alongside this, our series of six expert insight webinars last year brought together more than 660 attendees which were discussing topics from data for change to using OSINT in the investigation of CSAM reports. Alongside this, our commitment to raising public awareness was also extremely evident in the launch of the four campaigns ran last year aimed at increasing the understanding of CSAM and related issues, as well as promoting hotlines as national reporting mechanisms and experts in this space. And then lastly, thanks to support from Safe Online under Project Escape, we also launched our communications playbook in 10 different languages last year. And this guide provides hotlines with essential guidance on communication strategy implementation in their native languages. And the next, in the realm of knowledge exchange and capacity building, we have continued to empower analysts and partners through comprehensive training programs and facilitating peer-to-peer -peer exchanges. 
for our hotline training meetings, which are done with support from the European Commission, we saw the participation of over 200 member hotline attendees. And these meetings help to foster skill development among our members and promote knowledge sharing between the network. Alongside this, over 400 participants in 2023 were trained by InHope. This includes 71 analysts who followed the InHope basic training, 42 analysts who completed the InHope advanced training, and 58 analysts who enrolled in the online learning platform. Outside of just training hotline analysts, however, our commitment to building capacity also extended to our law enforcement partners in 2023. With over 200 officers trained on in-hope procedures, staff welfare policies, and content assessment and tracing methodologies. And then lastly, amidst all of these achievements, we also witnessed a few key developments that are going to be shaping the future of our work in 2024 and beyond. So 2023 saw the launch of the Universal Classification Schema, which is a harmonized classification system for abuse and exploitation material, which will be shaping the work of the InHope Network in 2024. We also saw the launch of Project Seaport, which is facilitating the creation of the Seaport portal. This portal is going to be providing law enforcement partners access to our ICCAM system, and this will help facilitate streamlined data and intelligence sharing between hotlines and law enforcement partners. And then lastly, with many looming changes in the regulatory environment, both in the EU and around the world, the InHope Secretariat has been very heavily engaged in advocacy work, promoting the role of hotlines and striving for the expansion of their mandate. This is exemplified by the eventual inclusion of hotlines in the draft EU CSAM regulation. And this underscores the growing recognition of our collective contributions and particularly members' vital work for combating online child sexual exploitation and abuse. So the achievements we are celebrating here today are just a testament to the power, collaboration, and innovative action within the in-home network of hotlines. And so going forward, as we look deeper into the work done by hotlines in 2023, I would like to pass the mic to our head of technology and innovation, who will delve into the developments and data in the realm of technology and report processing in 2023. So Kalina, over to you. Thank you, Abby. Hopefully you can all hear me and see me. Uh, I am. Uh, Delighted to be uh, among all, all 110 of you today. I will focus my, uh, the focus of my presentation will be how are we empowering our network of hotlines with tools? How, what is the vision we see forward in strengthening the position of hotlines? And lastly, what have we learned from hotlines in the past year? What does the data say and what are the early uh, canary in the coal mine warning signs about uh, what they uh, should expect in the future? So when we talk about technology and innovation, uh, we are a network that is part, a part of a wider community and we are very much aware of that. We are among a hotline, law enforcement and industry that are working towards the same joint mission. So I will speak a little bit about, about what are the tools that help us uh, empower hotlines and strengthen their footprint uh, in, in this community and make their work uh, more powerful. So th this is, I'm going to show a diagram that uh, if uh, some of you might, might have seen, if you have, uh, if you have been a member or you have been in touch with us before, about how we see this empowerment of hotlines within this uh, ecosystem and community. The starting point of where we are currently is that hotlines are interconnected to a system called ICCAM uh, to, to issue notice and takedowns, to exchange data and to uh, uh, make sure that there is the duplication of their work. There is a hash matching process between this exchange system. Uh, in addition to that, we want to grow this ecosystem. So th therefore, we have the universal classification schema under global standard, which aims to enrich this metadata and to translate the national legislation and classifications between hotlines. Then, 
uh, we come to the next parallel step about what happens with the in-hope uh, members that have their uh, collaboration with law enforcement. How can we make sure that the data exchange on that front is standardized and facilitated? So therefore, Project Seaport aims to relay uh, hotline report data into uh, law enforcement case data in the in the in the places where in hope hotline relay that information to, to law enforcement. And in the end, our vision ends with a centralized beta database. This is an end position that we want to go through that we where this standardized and rich data will be able to be stored and used by hotlines enriched by law enforcement and in the future possibly in, enriched by industry. So if we if we have this um, uh, map of where we want to be in the future and we ha have the vision, I will speak a little bit about where we are currently and what how the various uh, developments have contributed to our vision. We have launched report box version 2.0. This is um, uh, uh, an automatically connected to ICCAM uh, a, a form creator tool where hotlines, uh, especially at the in the beginning of their maturity, uh, can basically set up a, 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 a reporting form on their website and have it automatically be connected to ICCAM. We have launched a so software as a service um, uh, product on top of an existing open source model that is now available for all provisional members. On top of that, we have made sure that hotlines that connect via our via their own system are supported in a better way. This means that multimedia reports can be entered. ICCAM takes care of data integrity, meaning that whenever some fields are provided, we try to enrich them through connection with external services. And we make sure that the hotline has the final say about what is the data supplied. In other words, we, we want to make sure that all data is supplied, but it, it is always that the hotline can override what the final say is on, on a certain data element. And of course, action can be recorded without a delay. We have fixed the previous issue where now uh, synced actions can be recorded at any time. Then uh, if we are talking about how we can grow from a single uh, system to a platform system, we have expanded uh, our uh, technology uh, proposition to support multi-module architecture. That means that we have a re reporting system that, ho that hotlines use and we have we are also preparing a uh, law enforcement portal and we have put it in production. We are able to pilot and release the, the set of features with law enforcement and we are preparing for a future where we can prepare uh, the uh, access to hash lists for the individual hotlines. This is uh, a future that we are still working towards, but we want to make sure that we, uh, apart from having one ICCAM uh, database of hash sets, th these are contributed, tagged, and available for hotlines to use on their own terms. So if we were to overlay where we where we want to be and how, we, how these um, developments have impacted our ideal use case, this is where those uh, elements are. The report box is a direct tool for usage of, of the hotlines. ICCAM API regard, is regarding the exchange between hotline systems, the LA, LA portal part of Seaport regarding the relationship with, between national LAs and hotlines, and the multi, uh, multiple hash, hash sets as a um, uh, improvement where we can download the uh, hash list and also be part of this uh, centralized database uh, vision for the future. Then I'm going to go over the data and trends for 2023. And I, I, I am assuming that you've already had a chance to look at over at our publication of the annual report, which is an immense body of work of 60 through three pages going over what we have uh, what we have done. And we're not going to talk about us, uh, every li little uh, data element. We are going to talk about the trends and what they mean. So how we collect this data? First of all, we, um, we make sure that we download platform data of 
from ICCAM and everything that hotlines have contributed. Then we have a consensus process where we have data checking and uh, kind of uh, a joint contribution over the text of the annual report. We run narrative surveys where we ask hotlines in free form to, to uh, give their insight about what are the new trends they are seeing and also have they seen an increase, a decrease or trends that we should be highlighting. We have an overview of resources and publications that hotlines have already done through the year and we aim to quote and contribute whenever we can. There are over 20 data attributes that are uh, contributed per piece of content and report, either calculated or supplied by the hotlines, but what you will be seeing here is an, a summary of uh, everything that was supplied. So if we were to be looking at the volume of reports exchanged through the InHope network, the number of content URLs is a little over 78, uh, uh, 780,000. This is a 25 increase from 2022. 88% of this is uh, new content and 69% of this is new is um, uh, illegal content. Uh, the new and illegal are, are similar to uh, the percentage uh, proportionate to what we have seen in the previous years. It is important to note here that the, the time to remove uh, is different when we remove inside the network, meaning we, we honor these uh, standardized mechanisms for removal versus out of the network, where we aim to voluntarily remove a content globally. These uh, times of removal um, vary between 2.5 days in the best case for the hotlines within the network and up to 28 plus days where we don't have a member and we are trying to reach the hoster to remove the content. I will explain a little uh, a little bit further about uh, the, the impact of that. Then, when we have asked the, the members to to see what the what are the uh, uh, trends they are seeing, what we have seen in the data attribute of content uh, in, in terms of age, there is a rise in content in the period of 14 to 17 year olds. This figure was 11% in 2022, whereas it is 16% in 2023. We believe that this is related to NCII, non-consensual non intimate image abuse. We have eight to, uh, uh, out of 10 victims that are aged uh, 13, uh, three to 13, and nine out of 10 victims that are girls. We also uh, uh, think that the Part of this increase is because some of our hotlines have already rolled out tools pr for proactive reporting, meaning uh, victims can go and uh, create a hash and have their content taken down. We have reports removed from the IWF and takedown.org from NECMEC operational, so we think this is contributing to a larger pr uh, proportional percentage of this content being found and taken down. And of course, uh, the buzzword of the year. We wouldn't, we wouldn't, uh, we we wouldn't be uh, doing justice for what was the biggest uh, mo movement in, in 2024 if we don't mention AI-generated CSAM. This is a novel artificial intelligence being used to create new categories of abuse. In October 2023, uh, the IWF, an in-home member, has confirmed it has be began to see AI-generated imagery imagery of child sexual abuse. What is interesting to note is that in conversation with, an, with our analyst, it is often uh, indicated that the, uh, uh, image, the sh uh, shown faces do not indicate any kind of artificial uh, use. It is only the backgrounds and the non-distinguishable um, uh, CT scenes that indicate that this is AI-generated CSAM. You can see two quotes from our members on the screen where the IWFs say in their publications that the examples are so realistic they would be indistinguishable from real imagery to most people. And we have at the beginning of this year <clears throat> the campaign from NECMEC saying generated AI CSAM, raising awareness through their uh, legislative bodies about the rise of what they are seeing uh, uh, in their systems as well. Then we have the uh, cap sites. These are affiliate channels that reward individuals who create 
uh, uh, who create um, websites in order to increase website traffic to CM sites. The distribution of uh, CSAM and commercialization can be easily, re easily replaced. So even in the best case scenario where these sites are removed as fast as possible, they pop up quite frequently because there are templates and networks that continue uh, a continuous spin-off of this type of material. This is a trend we have started highlighting in 2022 and we have continued to see. Uh, if we talk about what, uh, how, um, how hotline members and their analysts have um, uh, done their work, we have to outline a trend which, is, which we are calling mass reports. It, this means that if in the past we were only seeing content evenly distributed uh, within, the, within the working days of the year, now we are seeing pockets of peak activity where we are seeing the record number of days where hotlines are assigned more than a thousand reports to, to um, work on in a day. Uh, in the end, uh, let me uh, summarize the key takeaways of what we are see what we are seeing, and along with the trends and our uh, experience talking with our members. Uh, the, the, the data is contextual and is aimed to to uh, outline the signals of what we are seeing as a as a network. However, the data is is uh, highly contextual. There are 51 nation, national jurisdictions represented with the organization va varying from uh, simple, uh, simply NGOs, um, associations of uh, hosters and all other combinations of organizations. Uh, we have distilled the information we have collected and we treat the data that we have collected as early uh, warning signals about where we need to prioritize and strengthen the position of hotlines. And of course, network expansion is essential. We need more hotlines all over the world. You've seen the map at the beginning of the presentation. We uh, hope to put more flags on that map and uh, achieve our missions with more members of InHope. Uh, and in the end, uh, we as InHope are here to promote the work uh, and to be the voice of all hotlines, help them position themselves in, in their local um, uh, footprint and uh, increase their position in the global community. In the end, I'd like to uh, finish the formal part of this uh, presentation uh, and on InHope behalf, honor the 250 analysts around the world that are working on this joint mission. Every impact point you have uh, uh, heard in this presentation is uh, only uh, uh, available because of a team of, the, of them. And at the end, uh, the team at InHope remains available and is here to support all of you. That's it. With that, I'm, uh, I'd like to invite the beginning of the Q&A session. Thank you so much, Kalina. Uh, yeah, going to the Q&A, I'd love to ask uh, our colleague Anastasia if she could um, follow up some questions that we've uh, received. Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you, Charlotte. Um, as of now, there's no questions yet. But as we wait uh, for the questions coming in, I'd actually like to raise a question myself. Um, maybe people will get inspired to share their thoughts in the chat. Um, do you have any um, theory to what the, the difference in processing and removal times uh, can be attributed between hotlines that are within the network and hotlines that are outside of the network? One sec. Uh, yes, we we uh, kind of uh, we we started uh, removing uh, content globally on a voluntary basis for the hotlines that have the mandate to remove content uh, everywhere in 2021. Uh, this is where this is the moment from where we started uh, collecting data. So. If we we now have enough data to uh, basically uh, conclude that the standardized process and the relationships with hosters that hotlines have are irreplaceable in terms of uh, what the data says about how fast content can be removed. So we believe this to be a contributing uh, factor. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Thank you. Um, I'm yeah, so I have one we've just received. Um, the question I have is related to the percentage of reports. Obviously, there was a, a 
rather large increase from 2022 to 2023. So the question is, what is the expectations for 2024? And also, is that a, is that a good or a bad thing? Yeah. Uh, uh, well, uh, uh, it, it, is, it has been uh, quite a, uh, an interesting five years with a pandemic in, in between uh, where we've had various uh, factors influencing, influencing the volume. It's hard to predict where uh, volume will go, although it, it is uh, with the uh, kind of AI generated AI on the horizon and being the growth uh, category of content, we expect to see content uh, going up. Previously, uh, previously, apart from the uh, one pandemic year, we have been seeing consistently about 50% 50, 50 growth of volume year over year. And to answer the second part of that question, would we consider that a, a negative or a positive or a neutral? Uh, we, we would consider that uh, a, a neutral, an indicator that more content is being found. Thank you. And this actually perfectly ties into, into a question we just received in the Q&A from Brian Hagelin. Um, he's wondering if you can provide more detail about how new content is calculated. Um, is it equivalent to novel or unknown CSAM, uh, meaning unhashed CSAM? Right. Uh, the the new uh, content is basically uh, uh, um, criteria of in two steps, make sh making sure that the, the content is not a, du uh, a duplicated URL seen in the last five days, just to make sure that it is only one hotline that is working on an individual content item at a time. And then there is no hash match to, con to content historically seen at, uh, in, at in hope uh, all time within the system. Great, thank you. I hope that answered that question. Um, now we have a lot of questions coming in in the chat, so I'm just going to move on to one from Lear Peters, who uh, wants to know whether you think that the planned change in the EU directive uh, to decriminalize hotline, uh, is how she formulated it, uh, will help to expand the InHope network. I can take this one. I think we're very excited on behalf of the Secretariat and our EU members about the new clauses within the recast of the directive. We do still have to wait for it to be uh, formally accepted and then implemented, but given the uh, expansion of the hotline mandate included within the phrasing of the directive, we anticipate that this will uh, support the work of hotlines within the EU to more uh, formally structure it, as most hotlines operate on the basis of a memor of memorandum of understanding with law enforcement nationally, and only a few do enjoy uh, official legislative recognition within the text of the law. So we are hopeful that, given this recast, there will be more action towards formalizing the role of hotlines nationally within legislation and supporting a more expanded mandate. As for supporting network expansion, we do anticipate that once the recast goes through, there will be interest outside of the EU of given the EU's uh, formalized support for hotlines for mirroring this support elsewhere in the world. And we're hopeful that we can use uh, the text within the directive and this support on a regional basis to encourage uh, countries around the world to adopt similar policies and to effectively support their national hotlines legislatively. Thank you, Abby. Um, another question came in from Carolina. I unfortunately cannot see the, the full last name. Um, she's wondering, um, I think I might have read something about the file hosters reporting CSAM. Do we have any insights on that? Are external links that enter the uh, are those external links that enter the file hosters? Are those reports done for documentation only? Uh, the majority of the uh, volume that we are seeing is public reporting, meaning from uh, members of the public. Uh, there are some uh, hotlines within the network that may have. Um, certain uh, hosting reporting uh, mechanisms in place, but uh, the majority of our what we see are is public reporting. 
Thank you, Kalina. There's also another question about um, reports from hotlines outside the network. So Avilius Nakutis would like to know if we have any data about content entered into ICCAM and hosted in countries without the hotline. Um, yes, the the uh, data the, the data about uh, um, uh, content hosted outside the network is collected uh, in the same standardized way as uh, w whenever it is hosted, and when hotlines are open, the entire um, backlog of uh, um, reports that are still open are assigned to them. But we don't report specifically for uh, uh, about this number, so you wouldn't see an outlined and separated. Um, statistics section within the annual report for that. We uh, kind of report on the vo on the volume as a whole, but not separately um, out of network and in, in network. Great, thank you. And I think another question for Kalina. Um, what is your timescale for achieving the full picture of efficient data <laughs> compilation and exchange with Inova as its help? Uh, we're in a rush. We want to get there as soon as possible. <laughs> we are in a very, uh, we are uh, in a very good position. Uh, we are lucky to be in a very good position to, uh, to uh, kind of have more than we have ever had before, and we have interest uh, and supportive legislation and supportive partners to make that a reality. I cannot make an educated guess as to an exact date, but we want to uh, strengthen the position of hotlines as soon as we can. Thank you. And uh, another question from Zoe Calpert, or also uh, a statement. Thank you for this great presentation and congratulations on the launch of the report. Thank you, Zoe. Are you already starting to see very realistic AI generated CSAM videos throughout our network? Uh, we, we haven't heard any reports about specifically about videos, and I think it is quite novel. The, new uh, technology that made this possible so i wouldn't know this 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 is this is a testament of how fast technology is moving so we have collected and concluded this information in january of uh, this year and video became a prevalent uh, kind of a tool to to generate a ai video uh, just after that so uh, it, it uh, what you're seeing is not separated so we wouldn't have that data within the 2023 report Thank you. Uh, these are all the questions I'm seeing at this moment. We can give it another minute to wait for any additional questions, but otherwise I would be handing over back to Charlotte. Yes, thanks, Anastasia. Um, yes, on that note, obviously, if people do have more questions, you can always send those through to us at communications at inhub.org. I'll just send that into the discussion now. That's the easiest way. And then obviously we can get these questions to um, the whole team, obviously our speakers, uh, if there's anything you want to follow up on any more in-depth discussions, specifically when it comes to referencing any of the content that we put out there, if there is need for clarification and how the data impacts the trends and vice versa, or you want to have more information on what's going on with the projects that we've launched, with the Global Standard, with Seaport, please reach out and we will get those questions um, to the relevant members of the team. Um, oh, actually, now we have another, we do have a question in chat. Yes. What sort of techniques do you generally use to secure children from being victimized online? Uh, our, our primary objective is to uh, help ho uh, hotline analysts remove content uh, from the internet. We have uh, some facilitation efforts to uh, help hotlines with all part of their work and uh, a lot, a large proportion of our hotlines have uh, victim support work. But uh, in hope, uh, in, in its uh, kind of uh, technology tools, uh, does not uh, have any direct connection regarding a victim support. Yes, and on the comms end of things, I can jump in on that. Um, with regards to mm -hmm. securing children online from being victimized, we do heavily focus on the need for prevention activities and creating safeguards and an understanding of what it means to be able to go online safely. So, you know, the way you would operate and navigate with in any situation. So the, the focus there we have is on prevention for children. We're also looking at... Um, further creating materials to see how far the educational curriculum is going with teaching children in schools. 
there's a lot of different initiatives there. Um, one of the things that Kalina did mention with regards to securing children was at least when this material does go online, giving people the opportunity to take control with tools like take it down. So if their material does unfortunately get put online, they have the ability to act and do something about that. Um, again, there, there is more to discuss on that. That would probably be a bit more specific conversation, slightly veering away from today's subject. So obviously, if you have any more to discuss there, please reach out to the email address we put into the Q&A. Um, but on that note, I would obviously love to navigate you all to get a copy of the annual report itself. So there's a QR code that's on the screen right now. Um, and while I thank our presenters for speaking today, please take an opportunity to scan that and get your copy. Obviously, yeah, Kalina and uh, Abby it was really, really great having you outline this. We started this last year and I'm assuming it's going to become an annual thing. So we get the opportunity to deep dive into things and hopefully give a bit more clarity and um, sort of behind the scenes of, of what we've done in the previous year, but also to try and push and promote the conversations for what's going to be um, followed up on in 2024 with the new connections with our ICCAM system, with the new projects that allow us to work more closely with law enforcement, with the advocacy that's being done in order to promote hotlines within the legislative structure. A lot's obviously ongoing. Um, but for the moment, I'd just like to thank all of you for joining, uh, remind you again, get your copy and uh, otherwise have a really lovely, great uh, rest of the day. All right. Thank you, everyone.